list or buy decisions. Now the question that we are asking is, the business need for a non-current asset, maybe a machinery, a motor vehicle, a building, are they going to buy it or lease it? So this relates to the financing of a capital investment. Now there are possible outflows and inflows for each of the options. So each option must be properly evaluated and any option that has the lowest net cash flow and because it is an investment that is an outflow to be made then we are expecting the option with the least net cash flow to be the one to be selected and applied now this decision will be considered separately from evaluating the entire trajectory or the entire journey of the asset so the asset that is being bought it will have other use is going to produce and help the business to generate more money okay this is just limiting it to why we should buy or lease and the necessary relevant cash flow so after it has been bought then we will now evaluate it based on its capacity or what it can do for the business so let's now look at when the asset is leased so here it must be known that the asset does not belong to the company being using it so it is just controlling it so because it has leased it it has the power to decide what and what not to use it and when so it still qualifies as an asset now the relevant cash flows when an asset is leased will be the lease or the rentals that will be paid periodically it can be monthly quarterly or annually because money will be flowing out it becomes an outflow when it is actually paid so if the rent is supposed to be paid on january per the agreement and it is paid in march the outflow will be considered in march not in january now when you make payment in the preparation of profit and loss the payments will come into the profit and loss statement and reduce your final profit that you will be making when you have a reduced profit it means that it will reduce the tax that you would have been paid so if you didn't lease the asset you had a revenue of hundred thousand dollars and your expenditures were fifty thousand dollars you would have gotten a profit of fifty thousand dollars if the tax rate is twenty percent you would have paid a tax of ten thousand dollars now if you lease the asset and the rent payment is let's say ten thousand per year your revenue will still stay at the hundred thousand dollars but now your expenditure will increase from fifty thousand to sixty thousand dollars profit will now come down to forty thousand dollars twenty percent of that will give you eight thousand so without the assets being leased you were paying ten thousand dollars in tax with the leasing of the asset it has come to eight thousand it means that you have earned two thousand in benefits that is also an inflow that will be considered with the leasing on the other hand when you buy it here the asset belongs to the company okay they have the necessary legal documentation to prove that they have acquired it here we assume that the asset will be bought via a facility not with money owned or belonging to the business the relevant cash flow will be the purchase cost which will also be an outflow because money will be lifted from the business to the current owner we also have a residual value if at the end of the period or at any point in the asset life the asset is supposed to be sold off and a value is gotten that money will be received so it will be an inflow this will not be realized in the leasing period you also have tax relief for interest payable in the leasing situation we're paying rent which was extra expenditure reducing your profit the same way here when you go for a facility and you are paying the interest the interest will also serve as an extra expenditure which will further reduce your profit and will also reduce your tax so this will be considered an inflow because the asset belongs to you we have something we call capital allowance the accountants call depreciation that is you are spreading the cost of the asset over its useful life how you use it 
So if the asset is $100,000 and you expect to use it over 10 years, every year you charge 10,000, which is one tenth of the value of the asset to the year. Capital allowance is the tax man's depreciation. And because capital allowance has a direct benefit on the tax that you pay, cash flow considers it. Depreciation is just an item. It's something that we just recorded, but it's not monetary. So the capital allowance is going to be like an expenditure, same as how it was explained with the rent in the leasing situation and the interest in the buying situation. So this is also going to reduce your tax liability. So the amount of the capital expenditure, you multiply it by the existing tax rate. That will be an inflow. Okay. Let's talk about cost of capital. The cost of capital is how much it costs you to borrow to buy the assets. So this will also determine how much interest you pay. And this attracts tax relief because after you pay, it will be an expense which will go into the PL and it will reduce your profit. And then the tax component on that expenditure will be saved. So if you are charging 10,000 as interest in your PL and the tax rate is 25%, the 2,500 is what is going to be saved. So normally we use the post tax rate and apply it. So therefore, the post tax will be the rate originally given. Then you multiply it by one less the tax rate. The example will be a cost of capital at a tax rate of 20%. So if the pre tax is 10%, the post tax will be 8%. That is the 10 multiplying 1, which is the 100% tax rate, less the 20%. So, meaning that the actual tax that you are going to suffer is the 8%. That is not going to reduce your profit.